Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shuffle podcast. Now, you may wonder why it's called Life's A Shuffle. And the reason why we came up with this title was that life is really shuffling. And it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, what age you are, you're shuffling multiple things in life. And the best thing to know in life is everybody faces your struggles and everybody faces what you're going through. But there's hope in learning something about that. So when our guests share their journey, the hope is you learn something in that journey so yourself can navigate the struggles you face, the low self-esteem, the self-confidence. And that's why we call podcast Life's a Shuffle. And throughout this podcast, we share our personal overcoming stories, as well as our guests who shares their personal journey in overcoming their personal struggles. Life's a Shuffle podcast is here to connect like-minded individuals. And thank you for listening to Life's a Shuffle podcast. Hi, this is Gloria, mindfulness and meditation coach. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, behavior mindset coach and positive psychology practitioner. And welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Today is Saturday, and I thank you, everybody, for listening to the podcast. And we do have another special guest, and she's coming all the way from back east, but she's an amazing person. We spent the first few minutes getting to know each other. I love her mask. I love the fact she has different hairstyles. She's being her authentic self. Sharita Mariner, take it over, and thank you for being on Life's a Shuffle podcast. Well, all right, all right. I love your voice. This makes me feel like so <laughs> em- empowered today. Well, I am Charita Renee Mariner, uh, CEO of CRJ Services Incorporated, and I am elated to be with Ron and Gloria on this morning. Welcome, Charita. Yes. Welcome. We're happy to have you. So, you know, as you know, we don't have a script on Life's a Shuffle. So I want you to kind of, you know, the real idea about Life's a Shuffle is to know that everybody face, faces the same struggle around the world. So I bet there's someone out there that are multiple people that face your struggle, are face what you're going through, are face the same story you're facing right now. So kind of tell our guests who you are, where you come from, what have you been, because you know what, the floor and the mic is all yours. All right. Well, again, I'm Charita Mariner, and I always say that I am wonderful and amazing. And I am because there's power in words and the way you speak about yourself and your journey and just your overall being. So I always start out by saying how I am wonderful and amazing. However, I wasn't always wonderful and amazing. There was a time in my life, especially as a young girl, uh, being a pastor's kid, where I did not really know anything but church. All I knew was what mommy and daddy said and what mommy and daddy said to do. And I was just in church, 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 seven days a week. And, you know, you go to school and they're like, there go the PK kids, right? And they're the worst children, but we weren't the worst children. We were really, really good children from an educational component. However, there were some times that we got into the streets because we didn't know any better and be, it became very enticing because we couldn't do it. You know, sometimes when you can't do things, Gloria and Ron, it makes you really want to do things. Yes. <laughs> it makes you want to do you get, real, you get real curious, you know. So um, as a young girl, uh, we experienced some things uh, because we weren't Uh, you know, supposed to do those things. So my baby sister was 14, pregnant in a gang. My older sister, 16, pregnant. Um, And I was like, I can't do that. My mom and dad already have two that are pregnant and we're in the church and that's not of God. And I don't want to bring any more shame to the family. So I had to do everything right. So I wanted to be that straight A student. I wanted to be that one that wasn't going to have sex until I was married. And I just did not want to be like what my, I thought my sisters had put them through. 
with all of that said, my mom and dad were able to see by them keeping us sheltered from the streets. We were so curious to do things that we found out things in the wrong way. Right. Which then happens to be one of the reasons why I am the way I am with my children. Very open communication Uh, as a family. We talk about everything. There is no conversation that goes untouched, whether it is about sex, relationships, um, same sex, different sex, uh, whatever it is. There is no conversation that doesn't go untapped. Preparation um, for life, you know, um, making proper decisions, experiencing whether they want to drink or smoke, whatever those things look like, what that does. We're just very honest. And I appreciate that because all of my children uh, are doing very well. Uh, my oldest son, he's 28. He um, has a college degree, criminal justice from Liberty University. Yes, it is a Christian college that he decided on his own. Hello. I didn't have to <laughs> force, him, <laughs> force him to do that. He decided on that college on his own. And my agreement with him, you get me the paper. I'll take care of you three years after that to pursue anything you want to do. Because he's a he's an artist. If I say rapper, he will hurt me. But he's an artist and he wanted to rap. And I was like, you got to get the paper, baby. So he went and got the paper. And now he's in his career. He is um, a lyricist artist. He is doing his thing. I'll have to drop you some of his EPs um, in the future, but he is amazing. And he's also into Forex and trading. So he's doing phenomenal. My middle son, uh, Robert, he is in the army. So he's doing great in his right. He's now in Florida. So proud of him and what he's doing with his life and his journey. And then my baby girl is at an HBCU like I was. I went to Morgan State University, Go Bears in Baltimore, Maryland. And uh, my daughter is at Norfolk State University. Um, Behold the green and the gold. So uh, I'm excited about her being at a historical Black college and university where her and her my, myself and her dad uh, resided. And we actually met uh, at a HBCU because it was important for us to have them cultured um, because we had that marriage, and I, I know I probably could go back, but just to jump to the from the children, uh, we had a great marriage of 13 years. Um, so we looked like it was great. Let me say that. So for everyone else looking in, oh my God, they're a beautiful family. They're a well-to-do family. And we smiled, Gloria and Ron. We smiled all the time. We smiled everywhere. Have y'all ever been in that situation where you just smile? Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's so much better when you smile. Kirk Franklin says that. And uh, we would just smile all the time. But deep down, we weren't happy. You know, we weren't happy in our marriage because we traveled so much and uh, we weren't really with the children like we needed to be. Because for us, it was about the career. It was about um, the money. It was about the lavish lifestyle. It was about having a great house. It was about making sure they had everything that they needed. But that was just things. And things are called matters of concern. And for us being young and I would say dumb, um, matters of concern is not what matters, right? Those things you can't take with you. At the end of the day, when you're laid to rest. None of those things go. So your priorities have to shift. But for us, it was all about the things. And um, we had our children in a predominantly uh, Caucasian environment in the neighborhood. So they weren't really cultured around um, a lot of African-Americans. So for my husband and I, it was important that they stayed cultured. So we did what we could in our home, but we also sent them to Cleveland to my parents and my family in, in the summers so that they can understand how to walk to the corner store, <laughs> how to play basketball on the court without a rim, um, how to <laughs> how to get in the house before the lights went out, you know. Ooh, um, old school days. Uh, old school days, you know. <laughs> I was all about that, you know, how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, how to frabalone, you know, and with the butter and the bread. You know, I wanted them to experience some of those things in the streets, you know, how to be careful when you're walking down the street and look over your shoulder, how to make sure my sons were on the right side of the street while 
their sister was on the inside of the street, how to make sure they were opening the doors for every woman that they came in contact with. So just making sure they had that street credit knowledge. Um, so they weren't just so book smart, but they had street smarts. Because a lot of times I think as parents, we think so much around book knowledge. Oh, we got to get them in college. Oh, we got to get them a great job. Oh, we had a great career but then they can't have a conversation with people that don't look like them or they can't uh, speak their mind amicably without arguing or yelling. They cannot address conflict resolution in a sound way. They don't have great mental health because they weren't taught those things. They weren't forced to understand and learn those things because our priority sometimes as parents, because we think we know it all, um, is we got to get the books. They got to be book smart. They got to get the grades. But they got to know how to get up and go to work and hold a conversation with the neighbor in the cubicle next to them. They have mm -hmm. to understand the importance of communication at the boardroom. They have to understand the um, importance of being strong enough and courageous enough to ask for that raise, to know that they have the skill set to get to earn more, to be more and to be better. So how do you, how do you help them through that? So we were really big on that balance um, in their lives. And we didn't always get it right. Don't get me wrong. We didn't always get it right. But what we did get right is when we understood that we were no longer um, going to be married for whatever the reason, you know, um, my ex-husband loving the pieces, best friends, but he always said he didn't want to be married. You know, he always did as best friends. And we used to laugh and joke about it. Like, boy, you'll never be married because you just have too many women, right? And he would crack up laughing if he were to hear me tell y'all this today. <laughs> and, um, you know, it was just one of those things. He didn't want to lose me to someone else because he felt like the friendship would lose, you know, the closeness that we had would not, would no longer be if I were someone else, which is true. You know, I don't know a man that'd be like, you got a best friend as a guy and be okay with it all the time, the way we were really good friends. So um, he decided to ask me to marry him. And I said, yes, I said, yes, yes, I did. And uh, we, we again, lasted 13 years and decided to come to an agreement that we weren't going to be married anymore. And we had an amicable divorce. We are happy divorce. And if nothing else on today, please understand, ma'am, sir, if you are in a relationship, first of all, especially marriage, the vows say what they say for better or for worse till death do us part. I could give you a thousand excuses on why we didn't make it. But one of the things that we always talk about is our age. We were very young and for lack of better words, dumb. We thought we knew everything and we didn't know anything. So it was easy for us to throw our hands up. We were like, eh, we'll be okay. We'll be fine. We'll do okay. Um, but when you think back on it, there's power in the words that you say. And that marriage is a commitment for better or for worse. It's long-term, even through the good, through the bad. I know he gets on your nerves. I know you can't stand her. I know the love making may not be what it used to be. I know the children get in the way. I get it. But you have to find that time to really get to know yourself as an individual, be true and authentic to who you are. And you can't do that if you don't love yourself, if you do not know yourself. And the one thing that you can do is understand how you want to be loved. I love the five love languages because once we were able to, as we got older and divorced, we understood how we wanted to be loved through our love language and stop trying to love each other the way we thought the other one wanted to be loved. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I do. I feel uh, yeah, it. A, lot, a yeah. lot of times, yeah, a lot of times we think we know how someone wants to be loved when all you have to do is ask the question, do you like A? Do you like B? While I'm thinking receiving gifts is his love language He's like, I just want you to tell me I look good. I smell good. I need affirmation. I want the words of affirmation. You're doing a great job. Instead of why, what are you wearing that for? Why do you have that on today? That is not his love language, right? So once I understood as we got older and divorced, um, the way he wanted to be loved and he understood the way I wanted to be loved, it was like, oh my God, what were we thinking? Like, who, why no one ever told us about the five love languages? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm like, this is, this is great. It's free. But I always just say, just learn who you are. Learn how you want to be loved, whether it's physical touch, whether it's words of affirmation, whether it's receiving gifts, um, no matter what it, acts of service, uh, whatever it is that, uh, whatever it is that you love to have 
the love for you. Let your spouse know what that looks like so that they're not trying to fish and find out and you're holding them accountable to it. And well, you should know me by now. Yeah, I probably should know you by now, but why don't you just tell me? Have you ever been in that relationship where you say, why don't you tell me what you want? Why do I have to play the guessing game? So, you know, just understanding that and learning that the older we got, um, it keeps us grounded together now where we raise our children in a very healthy environment. Our children are uh, excited about the fact that they brag about it too, man. My mom and dad may be divorced, but we ain't had no drama. <laughs> we got to see daddy and we got to see mama and they wasn't at each other's throat. You know, um, they still have birthday parties together, dinners together, celebrations together. Didn't care about his girlfriends come in or anything like that. I don't, when you are done, you're done. If you're having issues with your ex or your spouse moving on, married or just dating, it's because you still want to be with them. It's because the love is still there. When you all agree, mm-hmm. I agree. Yes, it's, I agree. Yeah, it's, it be, it, it's, yeah. You're resenting and you're upset because it didn't work out for you. So you want to make it hellish for everyone else around you and everyone involved. And it, it should not be. If you made a decision to go, make a decision to go. But it's no reason to be unhappy. We control our happiness. It's all up to you how happy or sad you want to be. You control that emotion. No one can make you mad. I used to tell my children, I don't want to hear you say you make me mad. How can someone make you anything? No one can make you anything at all. You know, at all. You are the keeper of your day. You decide whether you want to be happy, you want to be sad. So um, I thank God for my marriage. I thank God for my family. I thank God for the lessons in my life. I thank God for the open doors that he has given me because he's given me some great open doors, but he also shut some doors that I wanted open. And I'm glad for that too, <laughs> that he, he knew he knew best to, to shut those doors. So that's just a little journey around uh, my, my life as a wife, um, as a career woman, always working, you know, with the great jobs and traveling. So we think it's great, but as time goes on, you really understand what matters, Ronnie Gloria. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to have to go based on your last comment. I agree. As time goes on, when I think about this, and I don't know if you ever listened to one of my, my podcasts on YouTube, I, you know what? I'm 37 now. I'll be 38 in a couple of months. For my whole life, I thought if I had the car, if I had the girl, if I had the money, if mm-hmm. I had all the fame and fortune that, that social media tells us we need to have in order to feel happy, that I'll be mm-hmm. happy. Mm-hmm. First of all, I never attained any of that because if you had it, you would not have managed it. Second thing being is that's not what's part of my value system. Third thing mm-hmm. being is I strived after that so much. I got some of it here and there, but it never truly made me happy. Mm-hmm. Fourth thing is when I changed myself and found my power, I became much happier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, look, self-love is the best love. Go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say off your last comment, um, what do you think in your life, or sorry, let me, let me go back. What do you think, when, when did you wake up and realize I need to change myself? These are things that are not working well with me. Mm, That's a great question, Ron. And let me tell you, it was three years after my divorce. Um, Immediately following my divorce, I was like this hardcore shell, like I'm good. I'm straight. You know, I'm about to do me. I'm fine. I'm going to make it work. I'm going to take care of these babies. I'm going to have this job. And one day on my way to work, I had told my boss what I was going through with the divorce and everything and that we had finally made a decision. We weren't going to be married anymore. And he said, well, if you need time, let me know. And I told him, I'm good. You know, I'm straight, you know, because we want to be good. We want to be straight, right? We're, we're mm-hmm. strong, you know, everything is gravy. And on my way to work, I was at a light and I bawled crying hysterically out of nowhere. And I pulled my car over. I called my boss. I could barely breathe, Ron and Gloria, could barely breathe. And I said, I'm not going to make it in today. And he said, it's that day. I said, I guess it's that day. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. And I just cried. I cried. I cried. And I blamed myself self and what could I have done different and God why me why would you do this to me I was angry at God I was angry at myself I was just angry and I had to say breathe 
Maurice. And in the middle of those tears, and I hollered when I tell y'all I hit the steering. We ever been so angry you hit the steering? Well, maybe not, but I'll mm-hmm. tell you what I did. I hit that <laughs> steering wheel so hard and I screamed to the top of my lungs in my car windows up. And I said, you will not let this get the best of you. You will be okay. And I had to self-talk myself. I had to self-talk myself. You will be okay. And I stopped crying. I called my mother and we started praying and uh, the power of God just like kind of came over me in the car and I kind of, it came over me in the car and I knew that the joy of the Lord was literally going to be my strength. And that's where I understood Ron that happy wasn't what I wanted to be. I wanted joy in my life because happiness is usually controlled by things. Again, things is matters of concern. I don't want things to control my being or my make. I want the inside of me to have joy. I want the light to shine through me and to me. Then that only comes through joy. And the Bible talks about the word joy, make a joyful noise. The joy of the Lord is my strength. It doesn't say a lot about the word happy because it's the joy that's, that's eternal. And it's the joy that comes from you and within nobody else. So when I made that decision to have joy and not just to be happy, I knew that I was going to be okay. So I started doing things like self-reflection, um, words of affirmation. Uh, I just started selling Mary Kay and, you know, really empowering other women. And as I'm empowering other women, I'm also empowering myself because I'm helping myself to understand that I am going to where I didn't think that I was going to be able to do that, but I made that decision. Now, I could only do that with God, Ron, in my life. And I knew that I had a relationship with him for myself at that moment. And I thank God for the relationship for myself and not for my mom, not for my dad. The relationship with God for myself is what helped me understand that the joy of the Lord would be my strength and I would be okay. And once I made that decision and I understood who I was and whose I was, I'm able to be fine. And I, I'm telling you, I'm not saying that I don't have those moments where I question myself because I do. I would not be authentic to tell you if I didn't. But I also know that I have the answer to every question that I have if I go to God in prayer and if I understand that I can control the auras that are around me, the people that are around me. You can't change people around you, but you can change the people around you. (laughs) You, I'm going to say that (laughs) one more time. You cannot change people around you, but you can change the people around you. So you might not be able to change their behaviors and their attitudes and their actions, but you can change the people you decide to have in your environment Yeah, You know, uh, and that is so important. So I tell my children, you can't change people around you, but you can change the people around you. Um, Make a decision to have a circle of people that think higher than you, that are doing better than you, that have gone through more than you've gone through. So you can continue to reach higher heights. If you are the smartest person in your circle, please change your circle because a circle never ends. It keeps going and going, and going, and going. And if you continue to have a circle that is not going anywhere, then you become stagnant and you don't go anywhere. So check yourself, check your board of directors. And I did that. I used to think I didn't need anybody, Gloria and Ron. Who do I don't, I'm good. I don't need anybody. I got this, right? We all need somebody. We all need a coach. I don't care how coachable you think you are not. You need to be coachable and get a coach period. Everyone needs someone that they can talk to that can help them through those moments and to see things in different perspectives. And I have done that with my board of directors. I call my friends, my board of directors. You know, I have haters on my board. Yes. My haters are my motivators. They don't understand that. I know that they have a little hate, little hate, but I know I understand it. And I appreciate it though, because they keep me on my toes. See, the haters are your motivators and your elevators. You hear that all the time, but they really do help you elevate because when they are looking at you and wanting to see you fail, it empowers you to be like, I can't, can't slip here. Got to stay on my guard here because this one waiting on me to, to slip, right? So you have that person in, in, in your board that is like, 
challenging you. Well, why are you doing that? What make you think you can do that? And oh, that's a great question. Let me show you why I can do it. So I believe in having that mix on my board. Um, I have all walks of life, different career paths, different races, different genders that I talk to. It's not a, a team of people of 20 or nothing like that, but it's a close knit a few that I could be authentic with. And I know um, that can help me through those moments because who motivates the motivator? Mm-hmm. Who yeah. motivates the motivator? Um, usually it's themselves or no one. And a lot of people that are inspirational coaches or motivators, they struggle um, on the side and they struggle in silence because they don't want to tell someone that they're not doing well. They don't want to admit to the mental health that may not be where it ne- they think it need to be um, on someone else's state of mind, not theirs, but someone else's review or relevancy of them. And you have to have that person or people that you can go to when you need that motivation, because you, it, it could be draining to be the one that everyone looks to. And then when you're like, well, who can I look to? Who can I run to? Who can I talk to that I'm not feeling good today that won't judge me, that won't tear me down, it won't tear me out. So we all need somebody. And I thank God for my board of directors and I believe everyone needs them. And I also believe that once you understand the way you uh, wanna be loved and understood and appreciated, you can articulate that to your board of directors. You can articulate that to your family. You can articulate that to your boss. You can articulate that through your friends and everyone around me would be able to tell you that my love language is acts of service. That is my love language. I am all about the community. I am a philanthropist. I love giving back. I'm passionate about it. I've been doing it all my life and I love to make other people smile. I love to do for others, but I also have to remember to take care of myself. So I am very unapologetic. If you follow my Instagram or Renee C., Instagram, if you follow me on Facebook at Charita Mariner, you will see that I love me some me. I love me some <laughs> me. And I do it, and I do it unapologetically, you know, because I love everyone else too. You know, and I pour into others, but you can't do that if you're not whole. You can't do that if you don't love yourself, um, because you'll find yourself to be drained. So I don't apologize for it. I'm very intentional when I get dressed in the morning. I'm very intentional. When I go places, I'm very intentional in my conversation. Um, I'm very intentional about that uh, because you never know what those connections will be like and what those meetings will be like. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm just very aware uh, of who I am and, and whose I am. I love Ooh. that. It's so powerful. I yeah. love that story, Charita. It was, it, it's very inspiring. Um, I, I know um, I, I was, God, even going back to where you finally just woke up and crying in the car. I know what that's mm-hmm. like. <laughs> mm-hmm, actually, mm-hmm. It, it's crazy. I, I was kind of laughing in the back of my mind because I've done that before where I've actually sat in the car and I said, I need to let this out. I need to let this out. Because mm-hmm. a lot of the times people usually just hold it in. They don't want to let yeah. it out, mm-hmm. but they don't realize the power of just letting it out. You'll be fine mm-hmm. after that, you know, yes. um, just mm-hmm. releasing it. And I know I've done where I've actually looked at myself in the mirror while I was crying, mm-hmm. letting mm-hmm. it out. And then after mm-hmm. that, I just laugh at myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. but the feeling of like, uh, you're okay. You woke up mm-hmm. and you're fine. And yeah. you say, oh my God, it's such a, like, it's a good feeling. Yeah. Um, and it's okay to cry. It's okay yeah. to cry. People feel like it's not. And we do that to our boys. And, and I'm, I'm an advocate against this. We tell our boys, suck it up. Wipe your face. Yep. What you crying for, boy? What you, what you doing? What you, why are you acting like that? Well, you ain't quit acting like a punk. Why are you, why are you doing all quiet? Wipe them face, right? But at the end of the day, our young boys can't show emotion. They struggle in relationships. They don't understand how to articulate their feelings to people at work, to people in the streets. They don't understand how to do it. So they result to violence. They result to hands. They result to um, words and bitterness. And, you know, they just can't make it through because they don't feel comfortable expressing how they really feel. So so I did not want to be that mother that told my boys, stop crying. What you crying about? I said, baby, okay, go ahead and express how you're feeling. All right, that made you cry. No problem. But let's not stay in it. You get 24 hours and then you got to come out of it because we got to figure out what to do next. But I don't, 
I don't want to encourage them to not cry. Like you have to be okay with your emotions. You have to be in tune with their emotions. And I think if we were able to understand and let our boys know it's okay to cry, you're not a punk because you cry. You are mm-hmm. a human being that has feelings or to let our girls know it's okay to cry. It's okay to cry, baby, because I don't want you to be vulnerable in the wrong hands of the wrong man or woman that they take advantage of you. So we have to understand that it's okay to cry. Teach your children. It is okay to have those those emotions, but just make sure you balance that when it's okay to walk through it. Because everything you go through, the word is through. You go through it. So it brings you to it, but you go through it. It's just a stage. So the crying is just a stage of the overcome. It's a part of the process. So you cry it through and then you overcome in the end. And you're looking back and say, I made it through. Yes, you made it through. You always going to make it through. But it's okay to address the feeling that you have so that you can make it through. Because if you don't address the feeling that you have, you won't make it through and you carry the baggage with you over and over and over again in your life and you'll find yourself trying to find yourself. You follow me? Oh my gosh, so true. Trying to find yourself, you know? You know what? I I was one of those. So my, my, my dad, you know, he's passed away now. But, you know, I grew up the idea that, you know, especially coming from my era of the 50s, 1950s, 1940s, you just deal with your Black problems, Black families. Right? Mm-hmm. You just mm-hmm. deal with your problems, you suck it up, you don't cry, cry yeah. for men. So crying, mm-hmm. so, if you wanna, so my dad told me this, if you want to get in touch with your emotions, you got to talk to your mom. But my dad was the one to always cry because my, him, my, my parents got divorced when I was five. So he would cry about the fact that got a divorce, but he tells me to talk to my mom about feelings. And for, mm-hmm. so many years, mm-hmm. and for so many years, I was in failed relationships because I can articulate my feelings. I was mm-hmm. fearful to share my feelings. I was fearful of this. I was fearful of that. I was fearful just, you know, I, I got to break down. I got to cry because I'm going to suck it up. It wasn't until three years ago in August where I broke down because I got tired of being who I was. I got tired mm-hmm. of the failed relationships. I got tired of not excelling my life. I got tired of this. I got tired of that. And I broke down crying out of no reason. And it really mm-hmm. sucks that we have to go through these experiences. We have to break yes. down to finally change. It's like, mm-hmm. damn, you know, why can't I just have life and not go through these? But because we're so used to just doing and not being mm-hmm. in life, just doing, just mm-hmm. doing and not being, and mm-hmm. not realize we're humans having a spiritual mm-hmm. experience, that we have to have these moments of breaking down. And when it always talks about men don't cry, men got to let it out too. Men have got to have emotions. So it's going out, to, out, out there right now to all the men. Look, guys, you're okay if you cry. Trust me, if you cried and show your emotions in front of your friends or in front of your family or in front of your coworkers, people will actually show that, that, that they care about you and they will show that you are human. Regardless of mm-hmm. your skin complexion, regardless of your man, you are a human being having an emotional experience and letting that feelings out will create more space with more positivity in your life. Mm-hmm. And, and it's so true because I, I think about and I, I think about the way God made us in the likeness and image of him, right? And the spirit of God wants to fulfill the plans that he has for our life. He wants that for us, right? Um, Because we're not humans having a spiritual experience. We are spirits that's having a human experience. Yes. And when, when we own those things in the spirit, we can manifest those things in the earth. And we gotta understand that, hey, God has placed us here for a purpose. God, and everyone's always trying to find their purpose. I get it. I don't know my purpose in life. I don't know my purpose in life. First of all, your purpose need to be that you understand who you are. First, start out knowing who you are. Once you understand who you are, you can't do that by not understanding whose you are. Okay? So take it back to understand whose you are and who you are. Even back into Genesis, you go back into the beginning and you understand who you are and how he made us in the likeness and image of him. He wants us to have all all the things on the earth. He wants to have houses and riches and lands. He wants all of those things for us. But there is things we have to do. We have to live right. We have to um, be kind. We have to respect each other. We have to respect others. We have to, you know, be in right standing. And we have to make sure that we're having those honest conversations, whether it's in your family, whether it's in your church, 
whether it's in your friend, in your community, we have to be able to have those honest conversations to help each other. Because like you said, you finally learn things when you're in the brink of something or when you had to go through so much till you finally got an aha moment. Why can't we just understand and know what's going on? Why do we got to experience all this stuff? Well, because a lot of times with our free will, we're hard-headed. And we think we know it all and we have all the answers and we don't want to reach out to others that may have those experiences. Hence your board of directors that know more, do more, been there than where you're going. They've been there already and got the ticket for it in the, in the front row seat. All you got to do is just ask and communicate and follow through and follow up. And you could eliminate a lot of the errors and the crooked streets that you go down. Um, but sometimes our pride, you know, gets in the way. So when I think about some of those things, um, how our pride could get in the way, I think about working in corporate America for over 20, 23 years at Walmart and Target, the top two retailers in the world. Um, I worked for Walmart for over 13 years as an executive and uh, running eight stores, three quarters of a billion dollars in sales revenue. Never saw my family, but hey, I was all that in the bag of chips, right? Hmm. So we think, uh, decided <laughs> then after that, I got tired of not being with my family and I decided to have my last year of my daughter's life in high school before she went to college that I was going to spend time with her. Time is currency. I watch how I spend it now. I didn't always, I watch how I spend it now. And it was more important for me to have that time with her. So I transitioned over to Target. Target recruited me um, as an executive with them. I worked for Target for three years and three months. And um, now I am going from corporate America into entrepreneurship. And I don't know if I'll go back to work <laughs> or not, <laughs> but I do, I do know that uh, going from corporate America, working for someone else and doing what others are having you do to your own business, it's very different. Um, you motivate yourself for real when you're an entrepreneur. Um, you, have to get, you have to get up in the morning. You, you have to find a reason to get up. You can't just sleep in the bed and think you're going to make money in your sleep. I don't care if you Bitcoin or current Bitcoin currency, Forex trading. You can say whatever you want. You got to get up and get on the computer, turn it on and make money, even through Bitcoin. So you have to make a decision to wake up in the morning. So I'm learning, and I'm not saying I have it all yet, but I'm learning in entrepreneurship that I still have to plan. I still have to do my things to do list because that's what kept me organized professionally in the corporate world. It's going to keep me organized um, professionally in my entrepreneurship journey. I still have to set goals for myself. I still have to have timelines for myself. I still need to partner with others. I still need to connect. I still need to network. I still need to build out. All those things are new to me, you know, so I feel like I'm a little slow with getting my business going because I'm trying to wait for this perfect opportunity to have everything in order when at the end of the day, I'm spending so much time in preparation when all I just need to do is just fail fast and fail forward. Just go, Charita. Just go for it. Learn it along the way. Fix it as you go. But we, that sounds good. That sounds real good, right? Fix it as you go, girl. It'll be fine. It'll, you'll be okay. Just go ahead and get started. That's not easy to do when you come from a world of trying to working things out through perfection, right? And mm -hmm. wanting to have everything lined up. You want everything to be in order first and you come from order, right? Military family and come from order. So I got to have A, B, and C before I do D, E, and F. Well, mm -hmm. I'm understanding now. Just go, you know, so just go. I, just go. Just go with I the started, flow. Yeah, just go with the flow. I started my business doing something I'm passionate about. I love fashion. I love shopping. I love organizing. Okay, what can that do to make money? Because I do it for my friends. So I said, hey, I'll be a personal stylist, a private shopper, and a professional organizer. CRJ Services Incorporated is birth. And I love doing that for others, traveling image consultant, um, helping others understand who they are, creating a style with them and for them based on what they think they like and based on what the trends are and see how we can integrate the two. Um, so I'm excited about this new journey in my life. And again, I don't know if I'll go back to work um, or, uh, you know, uh, for someone else. I may, I may not. But at the end of the day, today, I am working out my business. Like and Oh, thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. Oh, well, I'm blessed that you were blessed. 
<laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, Look at that. I, all that energy. I, <laughs> talk to I know. Right. I'm in, I'm in a hotel lobby and I'm having the <laughs> podcast with you all. And a lady was sitting the whole time behind me and she's like very motivated in my speaking. And she said, I'm leaving, but I had to tell you motivated me, you know, so you just never know. You <laughs> that just, is you great. No, know. you never know how you motivate yeah. each other. So I just, I just thank God for my journey. And I thank God for this thing called life that we're on. And I thank God for the connection with you, Ron, connection with you, Gloria, on today, because if we were not connected, we wouldn't be able to have this authentic conversation. And, and I hope that someone finds value in our conversation today and that someone's life can be changed or someone's soul will even saved through just understanding that you got to know whose you are so you can know and understand who you are. There's so much value in this conversation and just listening to you and just hearing your journey. There's a lot of value here to, to be learned. And, you know, it's, 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 it's a process. It is. It's, uh, sure, it's truly is a process. Um, it all started when you just started crying in the car and I'm not, I'm not going to let that one go because I know what it's yeah. like. Yeah. It really <laughs> is. And it's just like, you know, you just wake up, you just wake up mm-hmm. from it and, you know, waking up from all that and, and through this journey and in the process of, you know, I'm all about now, um, really practicing a lot of, um, self-worth or self-love, yes. um, mm-hmm. Self-care. It's a st- yes, self-care. It's a struggle for a lot mm-hmm. of people. It, it really, really is. is a struggle. Um, we're so busy taking care of other people and we forget to take care of ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, when you finally had that and realized, I need to be me, mm-hmm. I need to love me. Mm-hmm. God, you know, just saying those words, I feel so empowered, empowered right now, just saying that to myself. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, what was that like for you? How was the feeling after when you finally said, this is it, I'm loving myself? Girl, I mean, I'm still showing it, honey. I'm still in love with myself. But let me tell you, in 2013, Ron and Gloria, uh, I had a Baudere photo shoot. And I went with two of my girlfriends. And you could not get me in front of a camera. Could not stand the camera. I would cuss you out if you took a picture of me. Do you hear me? I did not like, I didn't like my crooked smile. I didn't like my crooked teeth. I didn't like these big full full lips. I didn't like nothing about myself and I did not want to be anybody's camera. And it wasn't until I had that photo shoot and I took like, you know, all kind of cute little tight fitted dresses, you know, and I was going to take in this photo shoot and the photographer, her name was Rachel. I'll never forget her and Caucasian woman. And I say that with a description to help you understand this story. I'm African-American woman. I'm getting photographed by this Caucasian woman. And I'm like, what's she, what's she gonna tell me? She don't understand what I'm going through. She don't understand me. How is she gonna tell me something? She was a game changer for me. She said, okay, so you're here for a shoot. I said, yes, I'm excited about this photo shoot because I can't stand pictures. I hate taking them. My friends know it, but I'm gonna try it today. She said, okay, you, are you a teacher? I said, no, I'm not a teacher. I'm an executive. And she said, well, why do you have on this long black dress? And, you know, what is all these clothes you're wearing? I said, um, I thought I looked sexy. You know, she said, you do. She said, but there's something under there. I want to see what's under there. And I'm looking at her like, woman, you ain't looking at me, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, what kind of photo shoot is this, right? So um, I, I'm talking to her and she said, well, by the end of this shoot, you're going to me at the end of the shoot. And I'm like, yeah, right. So I wear the black dress. She said, okay, we're going to take a picture in your little black dress. She takes a picture of my black dress and I'm posing, Ron and Glory. I'm just posing. I'm thinking I'm on. She said, okay. She said, now take the dress off. What do you have underneath? I said, some a black uh, panty set and a zebra bra. And I had on a long pearl <laughs> necklace, right? And she said, that's what I want to see. And I looked at her like, I'm a size 16, 18. I am not getting ready to show you all of this you know, under that. Right. So Mm -hmm. I ended up doing that. And I sat on the couch. She had me lay down on the couch and she um, had my hand in a certain position, my leg in a certain position and had the pearl necklace with a knot. And she took a picture and said, smile. And I smiled at the camera. She ran over to me with the camera lens. Watch this. She ran over to me with the camera lens, y'all. I think I'm getting emotional telling you a story. And she said, look inside this lens. And I looked inside the lens 
She said, that's you. I'm going to say that again. She said, that's you. And I started crying. I said, that is not me. I said, that person is beautiful. Oh my gosh. I said, you didn't touch anything up. She said, not a thing. She said, I I can't touch it up. It's in my camera. She said, I'm going to have to go to my screen and actually touch that up. She said, what am I touching up? She said, look how beautiful you look. And I just cried and I hugged her. And I said, I can't believe all these years I didn't want to be behind a camera because I didn't like the way I looked. I thought my mouth was crooked. My smile was crooked. My teeth were crossbite, overbite. I was a mess. My big lips, you know, people getting paid to get their lips the size of my lips, you know? Mm -hmm. And here I am not comfortable with the skin that I'm in. And I looked over at that picture and she took a couple of more and she would show me the camera lens every time. And it's something about looking through the lens of yourself. When you look at the lens of yourself and understand the way you are is who you are supposed to be and how you are supposed to be. I embraced every role. I embraced every stretch mark. I embraced every curb in my hip. I embraced every bump in my back. You know, I embraced it all. <laughs> By the end of her photo shoot, I was in a bed that she had with all white sheets, nothing on underneath, just covering certain body parts of myself and had the sexiest photo shoot to date. Do you hear me? And I walked away from that photo shoot. I spent hundreds of dollars, probably 400 some odd dollars on the photos that she took of me and I did not get them touched up because I didn't need to get them touched up. I was absolutely gorgeous. And I have some, I'm going to send Ron and Gloria, I'm going to send you one of them, not the ones that, you know, me in, in any way, but one that you could just see a uh, very, very sound picture. Um, but I want you to see how I saw myself differently through the lens of someone else's camera. And sometimes we look to someone else to see ourselves different. But once I looked at the lens in someone else's camera, I understood me and how great I looked. And now I can't stop taking pictures. So people don't, they, they crack up. My friends crack up at me with photos because I have thousands of them and I'm unapologetic. I have a hashtag. I say, it's a photo shoot. That's right. Every day I'm taking photos because there was a time in my life I would never do it. And it's a story behind those photos because I do love myself. I do appreciate myself. And I do the same with my daughter. She's the same way. She embraces herself. She loves herself. She takes photos. My boys, they're very confident in themselves because I'm confident in myself, not conceited, just confident. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's very different. I'm not conceited where you in, where I'm haughty. I'm not that. I'm very humble, very, very humble. But I, and I know who I am and I understand my worth. I know my worth and my value and I'm okay with that. So that was just a story for me on how I became uh, good with me through the lens of seeing myself in someone else's camera. Oh my God. And as you see, and as you should love yourself and be confident, as you can see, there's always a story behind that. It doesn't just happen. Nobody Mm -hmm. just wakes up and say, I love myself. I love who I am. This is me. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Nobody just wakes up from, from that. And it is a struggle for a lot of people too, because a lot of the times, um, and I think you just proved it too right there, that we sometimes live through other people. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, based on how they might see us or how mm-hmm. they might look at us, right? Mm-hmm. And they mm-hmm. love that story through the lens. Yeah. That is different. And I would yeah. love to see that picture you're talking about. Oh, you wait till you see it, honey. You're going you to understand that journey. And this is powerful. Um, just, it was just, a, it was life changing. She doesn't even do photo photography anymore, but I am going to do another Bodir shoot um, in about a year. I'm going to do another shoot and I'm excited about it because it was just so empowering. So if you, if you have an oppor- if you have an opportunity, I don't like, to, I don't use the word struggle. I say opportunity, um, but if you have an opportunity with yourself and you're not really sure about yourself, Try, try doing a Baudet photo shoot um, or just a photo shoot, period. You know, invest in yourself and look at yourself through the lens of you, not the lens of someone else. And you'll be surprised how much value you'll find in that. You'll be surprised how much value you'll find yeah. in that. It's, it's really, it really is very different because Mm -hmm. when, um, I've always been the one to, I I have friends who likes to take pictures. So whenever we take pictures, I always tell them, well, I don't know how, because I don't know how to post. I'm very stiff. 
You guys uh, always know how to pose with your hands and your hips. I, I just don't. I'm, I'm stiff. But the very first time I did my photo shoot from my website, um, mm -hmm. and she, like, similar to your story, the um, photographer that I have here in, um, in uh, San Francisco, she opened it all up for me. Um, she basically I came to her and I said I need to I need some photos I need some photos for for the business for for mm -hmm. my website and I was straight up told her I'm going to tell you I'm not I'm very camera shy I don't know how right. to pose I'm stiff I can't do this I can't do that and she just looked at me she goes don't worry about it just mm -hmm. don't worry about it we will go through this and what do you like you know you like water you like to be by the beach okay let's go take pictures there just made yes. me do everything just all natural and mm -hmm. after I saw some of them on her camera and I was like mm -hmm. damn okay that's right, kind of cute right. <laughs> I said, that's yes. kind of cute. But then I was also hesitant saying that because I didn't feel like I didn't want to sound conceited. She goes, no, you know, and there's mm -hmm. another thing that she did where I love volleyball. So I brought a volleyball and she said, here, just do this with a, with a ball. Just do that. But it's just that for me and right there, I was even just taking that pictures in, in public and outside a lot of, in front of a lot of people, I was hesitant because mm -hmm. um, I felt like people are looking at me Mm -hmm. you know they're mm -hmm. looking at me like oh my god what is she doing but she said no nope, mm -hmm. just walk just keep walking don't worry about it just do what you would normally do if you were in the water do what you would normally do if you were playing volleyball and she just mm -hmm. keep taking those pictures and yes let me be honest with you after that one time I that's when I felt like okay I started showing up myself more I started mm -hmm. to post a little bit of my picture here and there in social media and then mm -hmm. started slowly with with um with the video so now i'm really working on i'm loving myself more and mm -hmm. just knowing what my worth is so yes i can say you know for a lot of people out there there is a struggle of mm -hmm. of self-love mm -hmm. it really is because there's that resistance but it does take practice mm -hmm. and you'll have to really want it mm -hmm. yeah so go ahead and do that photo shoot because let me tell you all the features you have Glory, you got some gorgeous features, honey. You better get behind that camera. All you got to do is <laughs> you. angle that camera and tilt it down a little bit and then look at yourself in that camera. Go ahead and take them selfies, honey. <laughs> I will. You know, look, I, I got to say, listen to you guys. It's really paramount that we always, as human beings, we always think things be perfect. Like, it had to happen mm -hmm. in the picture. Mm -hmm. Or we open up a magazine or open a social <laughs> media page. Or we have a friend. Who, oh, man, I just had this better. I just had this better. Uh -huh. Like, Compare. I hated my, yeah, I hated my voice. So me speaking in front of camera was non-existent for years. I just didn't, just didn't do it at all. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it became now I'm not only am I just not getting my voice being heard. I'm not being authentic because my voice and what I'm doing can reach people that you may not be able to reach. Glory can't reach. Right. Tony Robinson can't reach. Les Brown can't reach. You know, mm -hmm. all these people that we know, they don't reach every single person out there. There's 7 billion people in the world or more. So what I realized is that my voice has power. And when I got over that perfectionism, it needs to sound this way, to look this way, to do this, is when mm -hmm. I really start to try my power. And that's the biggest thing all of us out there in the world, the universe, is we always want to think you have to be perfect to do anything. And the yeah. real thing is, it's like your business, just like, especially businesses, it's not about being perfect because no one is perfect. It's about mm -hmm. why you're doing it, the past behind and the person behind what you're doing that becomes more of a conscious thing for you. It becomes alive. Yeah. See, mm -hmm. when you work for somebody in a business, they put you in a box. They're like, okay, you work in Monday through Friday, nine to five, mm -hmm. you, have this off, you have this off. Well, I want to learn. I'm going to grow. Well, you know what? Right now you're in this box. And when I, when I tell you when it's ready for you to grow is when you grow. What's mm -hmm. the marvelous thing about being an entrepreneur, no one tells you when to grow. No one tells you when to be creative. Like when I had my full-time job 14 years, I'm trying to tell the owner, hey, you know, we should do this, do this. No. A month later, oh, I think we should do this. It's like, dude, I just talked about that idea a month ago. But because he came with the idea, now it's a good idea. It's not good. Be, mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Be the business owner. If I want to change my website today, I can do it. If I want mm. to post something different, I can do it. That's if I want right. to take some educational classes, I can do it. If I mm -hmm. want to pay taxes, because you know when you're entrepreneur, you got to file your 1099, 
I have problems paying taxes. Mm-hmm. You know, we and, and people don't understand. When you work for somebody, they also tell you when you go to work, when your days are, where your case times are, and how Lunch. much you get paid. <laughs> mm-hmm. They tell you how much you're worth. When That's you quit right. and start a business, you know what you charge, what you work, and money's unlimited out there. There's a lot of money out there happening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So for those out there, for you, Sharita, start your business. Don't let no one tell you what you can and cannot do. Step into that passion, that purpose, and live your dream. Be authentic. Yes. Show up and create the life you can create. Not tomorrow. Not when something happens. Not when someone gives you a thank you. It's now. It's today. Because at the same time, we're the past, the present, and the future. That's right. That's right. Preach, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I, I have to say that because, you know, right now in front of my computer, I have about five affirmations. <clears throat> now, these are for me. These are not for everybody else. You can't, you can take my affirmations if they resonate with you. I mean, it doesn't matter. First affirmation is I'm worthy. Because oh, yes. the thing is that we don't think we're worthy. So I'm worthy. Mm-hmm. Not I will be worthy. I'm worthy. That's it. Mm-hmm. The second affirmation is I love money. You know why I say mm-hmm. I love money? Because money is not mm-hmm. the root of all evil. No, it's the love of money. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. Right. So I love money because it's the things I can do. I start my charity. I can do this Mm -hmm. podcast. I can can get my voice out there. Third one is I love my health. Because our health, you can't do much. Stress me upon that. Mm -hmm. Uh, The fourth one is I will achieve greatness. I will achieve greatness. That's what Mm -hmm. it is. The fifth one is I'm happy. See, I'm not going to wait someone to tell me I'm happy. The fifth one is I'm satisfied. And these are my affirmations because they're powerful for me. They mean something for me. Everybody has different affirmations. And we got to manifest these things uh, in a better way. And, uh, you know, I'm preaching now because I'm very passionate about the human being. I'm very passionate that we have more power and more resources than we think we do. But society tells us that we got to have the, the master's degree from Harvard and Yale. We got to have this job to make this amount of money. We got to do X amount of things to achieve any greatness. But everything's outside of us and needs to come within. Uh-huh. So with yeah. that said, Sharita, what is like, I always like my guests to talk about, our guests, sorry, talk about one to five sentences can be longer. What is the biggest takeaway you want to tell the universe, tell the world about yourself? What's one thing, take, what's one thing, one five sentences long, they can take away from you? Uh, just today, I would say, um, and, and it's different from what I would say, you know, years ago. But today I would say, uh, be okay with failing, period. It's okay. Just fail forward and fail fast, Right. Um, because a lot of times we get so afraid to move forward because we're afraid of the failure. And one thing about me is I have failed, but I failed fast and I failed forward. When you're um, moving and you're walking, you know, I think I think Oprah Winfrey said it. Um, one thing about climbing is you may not get to the top in the way you and uh, the speed in which you want to get there, but you're still climbing. You're, you're still going up. So be okay with the fact that you're still going up. Um, so I would definitely say fail forward, fail fast. I would also say about myself is that be unapologetic about who you are. Um, be intentional. I'm, a ve- I'm very intentional every day when I get ready. Every day. Every day I am intentional about when I get ready. Um, I make sure that I feel good about what I'm wearing and that I look good in what I'm wearing, whatever that may be, whether it's a jogging suit or whether it's a dress. But be okay with you. Um, be intentional and be authentic. And then lastly, I would say um, to know about me is God first in all that you do. Um, It goes back to really understanding your life and your purpose and journey and where you need to be in life and where you want to be in life. Go back into the good book. Go back into the good book and understand that you were created as a masterpiece. Uh, God don't make junk. Period. He don't. So there's nothing junky about me. Nothing junky about you. He don't make junk. You can't make junk when you make the sky. You can't make junk when you create rain. 
You can't make junk when you create bees that produce something sweet like honey. You can't create junk when you have the birds that know when to sleep. You can't make junk when you have an eagle that understands the purpose of a crow. You can't make junk when you see the way the light comes and the moon rises and the sun sets. Those are intentional things that God created. So all of that is beautiful. All of it is beautiful. And just like he made those beautiful things on earth, you're on earth and he made beauty in you. So once you can understand that God don't make no junk, you understand that you are not junk. You are happy and whole. You are joyful in every right. You have the right to command the things over your life. You have the right to speak power over yourself, to speak power over your life, to speak wealth over your life, to speak love over your life, to speak favor over your life. It's about the power of the words that you speak. I am all about the words that I speak. I don't speak that I'm sick because by his stripes, I am healed. So I speak that I am, I'm going through. I am going through it. I am catching a healing. And they say, oh, your nose is running. I'm catching a healing, honey. I am catching a healing. I'm not professing that sick stuff. I am catching a healing. There is words and, and power in the things that come out of your mouth. So I'm very big on that. And you'll know that about me when you speak to me. I don't say things loosely out of my mouth. I'm very intentional about the conversation because the energy around you would love to have those negative words and play on them to say things. So you just got to take time to really be aware of what you're saying. And I do that all the time when I speak. I just very conscious about the way I speak and what I profess out of my mouth. But when you understand who you are and you know that God makes everything beautiful, because he's beautiful, the world is beautiful, the creation is beautiful, nature is beautiful, and you are part of what he made too. So you're beautiful as well. Life is beautiful. Life Amen. is beautiful. Yes. Yeah, so Charita, would you say you're living purposely now? Oh, absolutely. Let me tell you, I'm living purposely. I know I am. I'm very happy, very sound in what I'm doing. I am very excited about my journey. I'm very excited about telling people about my journey. Um, I'm very real about it. And I know that everything that I've gone through in my life was for a purpose, for a reason, and for a season. And just like season, they all change. We mm -hmm. get four of them in a year. But every season, there are changes. There's changes that's going to happen in your life. And, and people are seasons, too. There are some people in your life that will be for a season, and it's okay to let them go. It's okay to have those winter friends and those summer friends and those fall friends and those spring friends. It's okay because they all change. <laughs> I like that. It's okay. Yeah, it, it's okay. So don't, don't, get, don't get relished in that. Like, oh, I lost that friend. Well, maybe that was a winter friend. That was the friend in your cold season. But now that it's getting ready to be hot, you need a different type of friend. So it's okay to understand that those seasons, things change. And that's the people around you and, you know, your, your, the way you like things because you change too. And it's okay to change yeah. what you like last year. You may not like this year. And that's why you got to be honest with the, your spouse and honest with your relationships and your friends. Pink was your favorite color when you was four, but pink is not your favorite color. Now pink burgundy is your favorite color now, but you can't hold somebody accountable for knowing that burgundy changed and they only know pink in your life because you didn't tell them. So you got to be able to communicate those things. And it's okay to change those things. But just communicate it. Then don't hold people hostage to knowing you. You know, tell people about you. Be true to you. And again, communication is key. How about communication to yourself yeah. to be true to you? Self-talk. Yeah. <laughs> and, I <laughs> love, <laughs> and I love that. I just, I just told myself right now and listening to you that it's okay. It's okay to have different friends. So I can have a friend every season. Yes, girl. <laughs> let me tell you. Because they all have a purpose, right? You, just yeah. like in, in a, a coat, a covering, a coat has a purpose. A, a coat is different in the winter and you're going to change your coat in the summer. You're going to do a different coat in the spring. You're going to do a different coat in the fall, right? All those seasons, you have a different covering. Come on, somebody. Every season, you have a different covering. Every season, yeah. there's a different covering. Yeah. So it's okay. Mm -hmm. Cover yourself. Cover yourself, literally. <laughs> Cover yourself. I, 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 I like that. And you know what? Every change is meant to support you. Not every change mm -hmm. is bad. Yeah. Not every change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But every change so, got a purpose. Yeah. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Be, be intentional. Be so, intentional. 
how now, Shari, how are people going to find you? If they want to connect with you, they, they want to reach out to you, how will they find you? Great question. So you can find me on Instagram. I will be launching my CRJ Services Incorporated Instagram really, really soon. Hopefully within the next 30 days. Now, hopefully I'm going to put it out there. Within the next 30 days, I will be launching my CRJ Services Incorporated Instagram. I already have 15 followers. I had zero. And then I took a class with Monty from Clubhouse. He is super amazing. Oh, uh, I love Monty. Super amazing. <laughs> yes. During, during his class, I, was, I gained 15 followers you know, just from taking his course right there live and in action. So I do have 15 followers on a page that's not even created. That's how good God is. So um, that page, you can find me. You can also find me on Instagram under Renee C-R-E-N-E-E-C-E-E um, on Instagram. If you're on Facebook, you can find me at Charita Mariner, C-H-A-R-I-T-A, last name Mariner, like Seattle Mariners, M-A-R-I-N-E-R. And I will also be launching my Facebook, CRJ Services in Incorporated within the next 30 days as well. So what you're doing makes so much sense because you are a fashionista. Yes. (laughs) I love it too. I do love it. I love what I see. (laughs) I want to say to Shari, thank you for being a guest on Life's Shuffle. And I love how we dropped into this bubble. We dropped into this, this space and we let it all flow. And we let it flow Mm -hmm. in more ways than one. And that's why we don't ever do a script or questions because Mm -hmm. if I'm doing a script or a question, you're thinking about what to say. You're thinking about the right or wrong thing to say. You forgot what you wrote down. You're looking at a piece of paper. That's not being Mm. authentic. Authentic is just coming from that bubble and that space that you have created for yourself. And sharing your story now, not just empowers glory and not. Because remember, injury is connected. and We're all connected. And we're meant to meet each other. And I, I'm going to mm-hmm. take away from this is God and create no junk. And Ron Johnson is no junk. Yeah. So that's my no junk. Let me tell you. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so that's my biggest takeaway. And now not only empowering us, we're empowering you. Now when we post this, month, yes. it's going to power everybody listens to it. And I want to <laughs> say thank you for yourself being here, creating a space and sharing your story and being a guest here. Um, you know, it's, it's sometimes hard people actually tell their why. But that's why you're here, and I appreciate it again. I want to say for our guests out there and for anybody that wants to, to join Life's a Shuffle, go to www.life's, what it asks at the end, a shuffle.com. You can list our podcast there to get an idea of what we do, or listen to our why store, or you want to submit the contact list, become a guest, or go to Facebook, Life's a Shuffle, become part of our group, make a comment, be a guest, share your story because you need to empower yourself because as Miss. Sharita said, God didn't make no junk. Thanks for Tell listening. Him. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Yes, Sharita, thank you. Thank you for coming in and sharing your story. Um, we enjoyed listening to you. Um, there is a lot of value in what you've shared to us and to our listeners. And again, thank you. Um, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Life's a Shuffle.